In this video, I'll talk a bit about uh, Dow theory. And this is something that you'll run across uh, sooner or later if you spend any time trading. The reality about Dow theory is that um, it initially was for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Some people apply it to the Forex markets, uh, although there are some things that don't translate. Uh, quite cleanly so you have to keep that in mind but the Dow theory is something that a lot of longer term traders pay close attention to it operates on the theory of efficient market hypothesis meaning that uh, the market discounts everything so all available information will be found in the price as it were earnings potential of a company competitive advantage of a of a country in the case of currencies uh competence all of these factors are priced into the market even if not everybody knows all of these details um even some people even believe that future events are discounted in the form of risk there are three primary kinds of market trends when it comes to uh dow theory there's the primary trend there's a pullback within a bull market or a rally within a bear market. Um, and then these secondary trends tend to last uh, three weeks to three months. The larger one, the primary, tends to last a year. So you can make an argument that that's the primary trend in the US dollar Norwegian krona. And that's just a simple pullback. This is a weekly chart, less than three months. And then we continue to go higher. You could say that's a pullback. You could say that's a pullback. There's your primary trend because it did run well over a year. There are minor trends within all of these that last just you know less than three weeks. And they're essentially thought of as noise. Primary trends have three phases according to the Dow theory. In a bull market, these are the accumulation phase. So maybe you could say right here, we're accumulating U.S. dollars. Um, and then there's the public participation, which is the big move here with the occasional pullback. And then there's the excess phase, which is very obvious on this chart. We just spiked out of just up into the stratosphere. Now, in a bear market, uh, there is the distribution now, we will ignore this because this is more like the distribution. Um, all of these buyers are handing the bag to other people to deal with. There is the, and again, keep in mind, this is a weekly chart. There is the public participation. There's a pullback. There's public participation. There's a pullback. So now we're waiting to see if there's excess uh, phase. So, like I said previously, the uh, Dow Jones theory initially worked on stock markets. So, back in the day when uh, the um, Charles Dow came out with this theory, you know, he died in 1902, so you have to keep that in mind. And yes, he's the person that the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, you know, is, uh, he was involved in the Dow Jones Corporation, so... Uh, yes, he was very influential here. Uh, he has another thing where he says the indices must confirm each other. In his day, it was Dow Jones Industrial Average itself. So you can see the public participation, a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a pullback, right? So this is the Dow Jones Transportation Index. And if you think about it, it makes a certain amount of sense. Companies that move things, and, and back then we would be talking about rail stocks more than anything else. But if the economy is doing well, the railroad companies are doing well. So it makes sense that it confirms right along with the overall economy that things are going well or poorly. If, if one of these isn't working with the other one, that can also suggest that perhaps... Um, something's not quite right. He also was big on volume and needs to uh, confirm the trend. So when we had this washout here and this recovery, the volume spiked. So he does like that. 
He also said that trends persist until a clear reversal occurs. So this was a trend and that was a clear reversal. This was a clear reversal. And then the new trend, the opposite direction, came back into the picture. It should be noted that he basically relied on closing prices and really didn't care about the interday movements of the index. So for a trend signal to be formed, it's the closing price that has to signal the trend, not some type of hammer or anything. You just want to see higher closing prices or lower closing prices. The reversal in the market is when the primary trend um, is just unable to, to, to make a, a fresh high. So, you know, a lot of you have been using uh, Dow Jones theory in a sense uh, to begin with, or in this case, it couldn't say, it, you know, it couldn't produce a fresh low. Now that was obviously oversold. So it's not a huge surprise. As you can see, there has been a lot of chop, but we've yet to actually run into that problem. So it certainly looks as if the trend that we are in, at least as I record this, still very strong. This is an uptrend that went for a while. Notice how we fell pretty significantly, and this high was lower than that one. So that's basically what he's talking about. As the lows get lower, it shows that we may be moving into a downtrend as the uh or as the highs get lower, that shows that we're moving into a downtrend. And as the lows get higher, it suggests that we are going to rally. Now, here's the thing. We don't really have an index in the Forex world to use on this. But a lot of this does translate. You just simply um, apply it to your charts what we don't have is volume and the uh, transportation. A lot of times what people will do is they will replace transportation with, you know, is it a risk on currency pair or something like an Australian dollar, US dollar? Well, take a look at indices around the world. If they're all rising, then that's more of a risk on move. And that helps confirm the Aussie, like the uh, Dow Jones transportation average index could for the Dow Jones itself.